Hi, I'm Warwick from Harder and Steenbeck, and we've had a bunch of questions about the general topic of air pressure. So the first question on this topic is, is how much air pressure should I use with my airbrush? So there is a, a one answer to this, and then there's a lot of other information that goes behind it. So the one answer is, if you just want one pressure to use for almost everything you're ever gonna do, then you'd probably say that in PSI, it's around about 25 to 27 tops. In bar, that's uh, you know, like sort of 1.7, 1.8, up to two bar. A Couple of other points about air pressure. Uh, generally speaking, you should think about air pressure as the energy that drives the atomization of your airbrush. So think of it like an energy store, okay? So the more energy that you put into the paint, the greater the extent of the atomization. So the finer the mist that will make, the less energy you put in, the less atomization is gonna be there. Also, the more energy you put in, the faster the airbrush will paint for any given trigger opening. Uh, and the less air pressure you put in, the slower it will paint. So how can we exploit that? So when we think about um, more air pressure, if you wanna move a lot of paint really quickly, um, you can dial your air pressure up to a point. Don't go too far, because when you put too much energy into the paint, it's liable to bounce off whatever you're trying to paint, and then you kind of get it billowing um, around the space that you're painting in, and that's definitely not good. So there's a limit to how far you can go with that. But in terms of getting very fine atomization for perfect blends, you want to be at the upper limit of uh, you know, what you would use with your airbrush. That's typically 25 to 30 PSI, uh, you know, 1.7, 1.8 to 2 bar for most brands. What would you do with putting less energy into the paint? So if you're painting some very, very fine details and you want very defined edges to that, then it's actually useful to limit the atomization that your airbrush is producing. So if you're trying to make a line that's very tightly defined, or if you're trying to make a highlight that doesn't have a diffuse edge to it, then you might want to turn your pressure down fairly low to actually limit the extent to which your airbrush can atomize that paint. So that, that'll be helpful for that. Also, I was doing very, very fine details. Remember that to spray a very tiny amount of paint as you do with detail painting, you don't need as much energy because the amount of paint is lower. You can use a lower pressure. Using a lower pressure slows the delivery speed down of your airbrush, which means that that highlight that you're trying to put down, instead of it being like just a blip on the trigger, which is a little bit of a stressful moment, are you gonna put down too much paint, for example? It goes from being like that to being something where, you know, you can open the trigger for a second or a second and a half and decide, based on what you're seeing on what you're painting, decide when you wanna shut that trigger. And that's a much more controlled process than blipping the trigger and hoping that you're not getting too much put down. So that's another really useful way of maybe reducing air pressure when you're doing very fine work. And the final way that I think you can really use air pressure as a, as a really positive creative tool, and I love it for this, is when you turn it down very low, with bigger trigger openings, you start to get textures. So instead of having this very finely atomized mist coming out the front of your airbrush, you start to get textures. Um, and so the less energy you put in, the less well your airbrush will atomize and the more textured the finish becomes. And this is super useful for very quickly being able to create rocky, stony textures. So, you know, if you pick up three, four, five colors, a brown, a white, a black, a purple, a blue, and you put those over a gray substrate textured, it starts to look very, very much like granite very quickly and with, with not a whole lot of skill, actually. So it's quite fun to, to play with that. Um, play around with your trigger opening. The more you open the trigger, the more paint you're putting into this limited amount of air and asking it to atomize that. Putting more paint into that small amount of air causes it to atomize even less. So you vary your dot size and that helps you know, with the kind of organic naturalness of this rock-like texture that you're trying to make. It's also useful on reptilian skins to not atomize so well. Just gives that little bit of roughness and reality to the skin texture that you're putting down. So 
I'd really encourage you to play with low air pressures when you're trying to create any kind of texture. It's a very fast way of doing it. And somehow the effect that you get from it, it always seems quite organic and quite natural, you know? So it's, it's a really easy way to create that. So I'd really recommend playing with that. And of course we can't talk about air pressure without talking about the air compressor. So the main point I wanna give you on that one, which is maybe not the one that you're gonna expect, is don't overspec and don't overspend on the compressor. The thing that you have the creative relationship with is the airbrush, okay? If you're gonna invest money in your setup, think about investing it there first because that's what's gonna give you the most bang for your buck. Uh, with the air compressor, you need to think of it really as just the thing that provides the energy to run the airbrush. And as long as it is providing you with pulse-free airflow, doesn't have to have a tank to do that, by the way. A lot of the modern compressors are giving perfectly smooth air without a tank. The thing you're really looking for is a pressure regulator. If it's got a pressure regulator and a moisture filter, nowadays that usually means that it's gonna give you a perfectly pulse-free airflow with controllable pressure. And that's really all you need. If you're gonna be working for more than an hour at a time, then you need to start thinking about tanks, double heads, things like that. But if you're not, and a lot of that's to do with planning your painting, then you can definitely get away with the smaller compressors. Um, and um, yeah, don't overspec and don't overspend. The other thing I'd like to just come back to in talking about air pressure is I'd like you to develop a sense of hearing about what your airbrush is doing. So just bear with me on this. When you've got the air pressure right, your airbrush will have a certain beautiful soft sound to it when it atomizes paint. It's a combination of your paint preparation is right and your air pressure is correct. What you'll find is if you've got too much air pressure, your airbrush just kind of sounds a bit rough. And if your paint is a bit too thick, your airbrush also will sound a bit rough. You're looking for a very smooth sounding, pleasant sound really from the airbrush. And you can approximate this, just learn it with water. So put some water in the airbrush, paint at say 25 PSI, and you'll find with our airbrushes anyway, and I think with most others too, that when you pull back on the trigger, as you introduce the water to the airflow, you'll start to hear this kind of pleasant sound as the atomization gets underway. If you crank the pressure up, that sound takes on a much harder edge. And that is the same sound that you'll get if your paint is too thick. So if you can start to develop this kind of sense of hearing of what smooth atomization sounds like, it'll help you to understand that you're not overpressurizing. This will give you paint bounce, which gives you a messy room, all sorts of things you don't want. But also in your paint preparation, if you can hear what bad atomization sounds like, um, then you'll know that your paint prep is a little off as well. So it's useful to kind of develop that sense of hearing about what good atomization sounds like. A little abstract, I know, but it is useful. So pay attention to that as well. As ever, please do like and subscribe if you think it's been valuable. And do let us know in the comments what you think about the videos, what other topics you might like us to cover, because really what we want to do on the channel above all is to give you the information that helps you be as creative as possible with as few points of friction as possible. Thanks so much for your support.